Hey guys, it's Loki, and welcome back to Valair. Today we're covering a monster commonly used in many campaigns across various systems, the zombie. My last undead video on skeletons was well received by many of you guys in the lair, so I've been itching to release this video to see what you'll all think. If you like this series and want to see more, make sure you subscribe to the channel and have given this video a like to encourage the algorithm on YouTube to do its thing. Thank you very much. Zombies are a staple in many campaigns that include elements of undeath. They make for great monsters to into battle, especially in the earlier levels, but in later levels they are valuable as trash mobs and adds for more powerful enemies such as death knights and liches. Zombies in play are typically reanimated humans whose bodies have not long since been dead. Bodies who are reanimated much later typically come back as skeletons because, well, they are typically a pile of bones. Whilst humans are typically the main humanoid to be reanimated as a zombie, it doesn't have to be the only one. Dwarfs, elves and gnomes also make for great reanimated zombies, especially in regions and communities where such creatures can be found frequently. The reality is any humanoid can be animated using the third level spell in D&D called Animate Dead, which means even goblins, orcs and bugbears can be made to serve and fight. Finding decent miniatures or artwork of such creatures in a reanimated form may be very difficult, but sometimes there is value in just using theatre of the mind to describe the zombie, rather than actually fully relying on a physical representation. Zombies in typical literature are typically ever-hungry monsters who are stalking prey looking for their next meal. But I feel like that, whilst it is interesting, doesn't really appeal to me as a dungeon master. I want my zombies to be able to remain dormant for many years, in almost like a state of hibernation, in underground crypts and dungeons, just waiting for a group of adventurers to stumble upon them. In my games, it's the magic that empowers them and gives them life and, and sustenance. And their need to fight and kill is tied to, well, more of a unrelenting rage than anything else. Similar to Attack on Titan, perhaps, and how the Titans behave, rather than the zombies in The Walking Dead, as an example. In my game, zombies are split into a variety of variants, which includes zombies that can explode when they hit zero hit points, leaving behind toxic gas that can debilitate creatures who are too close, as well as zombies who are much faster than their counterparts, who are able to chase down slower player characters and knock them down with a charge ability, which is quite similar to what an elk in D&D can do. In my game, this makes zombies more interesting. It allows me to represent the necrotic energy in them as being able to adapt and modify and enhance these corpses in a variety of ways. It allows me to make sense of why some of these reanimated corpses could be more powerful undead, such as ghouls or ghasts as well, rather than just relying on other lore from Dungeons and & Dragons and other you know, fantasy which might not suit the game that I'm currently running. The reality is I haven't really changed much from the typical D&D zombie for my own game and I use the same stat block, apart from slightly lowering their intelligence and wisdom scores as in my campaign low power undead are incapable of making complex decisions. They are incredibly simple minded, some could say brain dead, and can be quite easily tricked or confused by a group of smart, cunning adventurers. My high power undead on the other hand typically do have a higher intelligence score, typically matching most player characters, to represent perhaps the heightened volume of necrotic energy, the power that is seeped into their bodies. My big change to zombies is the variety that I've added. I'll show you guys one of these variant zombies which you can use in your games. If you're not playing D&D or a similar system like DCC, Dungeon Crawl Classic, it may require some tweaking in order to adapt it, but I imagine it won't be too difficult as most of my ideas are system neutral. This is the Noxious Zombie. This zombie, when destroyed, releases a cloud of noxious gas, 
which afflicts all creatures within five feet of it. Those creatures must succeed on a constitution save or take 1d6 poison damage. It is a simple ability, but these zombies will make your players adapt in their play styles and consider different strategies in order to defeat these zombies. It also has a very potent bite, laced with poison. If the noxious zombie rolls a critical hit, the creature is automatically poisoned for one minute, meaning that any attacks and skill checks they make are at disadvantage. This also occurs if a player rolls a critical failure, natural one, on their save against the noxious cloud. That's what happens when the zombie reaches zero and releases that cloud of, of, of poisonous gas. This zombie does have a slightly higher AC of 10, but a lower hit points of 18, which kind of, you know, averages it out. They are slightly stronger physically, but they lack the undead fortitude ability that typical zombies have that allows them to withstand a lot of punishment. Apart from this, and as I've said before, you know, when corpses rise in my campaigns, they rise in different ways. They gain a variety of abilities, and this allows for more interesting mutations and, and, and variations. I put this down to how much necrotic energy has actually been used to bring back a corpse and what the source of this necromancy was. You know, was it a low level, um, you know, wizard, maybe a, a level four wizard, or was it a, you know, 20th level necromancer, right? Everything else about the Noxious Zombie is pretty much the same, including the challenge rating. Meaning if your party is facing off against six zombies, you can swap a couple of them out with noxious zombies instead, giving your party quite the treat. <laughs> They'll learn quickly that they need to keep the noxious zombies away from them and have their ranged companions pick them off using arrows, axes and, and spells. I'm always looking for ways in my campaigns to kind of spice up my encounters to stop them from feeling slow, simple or boring. Adding variety, even if it's as simple as one of the zombies wearing chainmail, could be a good way of changing things up. There are also other varieties outside of my custom ones that you can consider for your games. From the Tales of the Yawning Portal, there is a zombie called the Greater Zombie, which boasts much larger hit point pool, uh, armor class, speed, strength, immunities, and attacks. There are zombie giants, and even a zombie beholder as well if you really want to challenge your party i like this kind of stuff but i feel like it would require a very powerful lich to be able to animate such such you know potent enemies but then again they could make for great guardians and defenders and pets for such figures i've run a fair few campaigns centered around necromancy and undeath so i consider myself a little bit of a self-proclaimed expert when it comes to this matter for any of you guys who are looking for a way to include undead, primarily zombies, skeletons, and, and other stuff like that, consider having like a cult of necromancers who worship an ancient god that is quite far removed from the campaign. If you want to continue keep it with, in, within lore, I think uh, Orcus is a good choice, right? Um, and you can have these necromancers you know, send out cultists and acolytes to graveyards and crypts to raise these skeletons there as servants to maybe attack the nearby farms, settlements and communities and, and destroy them. Alternatively, maybe there's a cult of necromancers who are searching for a forgotten scroll or a magical item which will grant their leader some sort of magical unique ability which will allow them to enact their will, which is typically just conquering and dominating <laughs> the nearby kingdom typically. There aren't many good necromancy spells in most TTRPGs, which is typically why I actually give cultists and other worshippers of undeath a special ability which allows them to indiscriminately raise the dead as part of a ritual which can either take minutes, hours or days depending on a variety of factors. This might seem powerful, but this ability does not allow them to exact direct control over those that they raise, unless the cultists use their powers to concentrate in order to do so when cultists aren't able to control and concentrate on those that they've risen they are typically ripped apart by those very same servants 
High level play characters might be able to learn more powerful homebrew magic, which will allow them to raise not just one, but several, a dozen, maybe even hundreds of undead. The only thing that stops the expression and the imagination of you and your players is the invisible barriers that you set up around your game. If you're comfortable with players or NPCs raising armies of undead, it can lead to some really interesting results for everybody involved. This is especially the case in campaigns where players eventually end up owning towns, towers and keeps, which they now need to defend from regiments of infantry and archers. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video as we've continued this series covering various creatures and monsters. I do now need some ideas of what I should cover next, so leave your ideas in the comments below. If you agree with what other commenters are saying, well, you know, give their comment a like to let me know uh, what I should be focusing on next. I'll see you guys next time on Loki's Lair. Until then.